Hey everybody out there in YouTube land. This is Jen. Time has proven me right on this movie. And Christian is also with me. We'll get to him in a minute. So if you want to hear Jen's wise, wise thoughts on this masterpiece, Pet Cemetery 2, stick around. Prove me right, Sparky. You just wait. It's a bullshit. This movie's bullshit. It's stupid. There's nothing good about it. It will n nothing will ever be as bad as this pet cemetery in the pet cemetery franchise. What do you gotta say now, motherfucker? Word to your mother. Congratulations, Pet Cemetery 2. You're now the second <laughs> worst Pet Cemetery movie, or the second best Pet Cemetery movie on how you look at it. Okay. I never said most of that, by the <laughs> way, you motherfucker. I don't hate this movie, and Clancy Brown's great. You movie. gave it a lot of hell. Okay, yeah, but the original's so fucking good. Okay, so I guess why well, you guys need some context. I even when little Jen, when this movie came out, I was about nine, ten-ish, I guess. And even though I, I love the original Pet Cemetery. The, the book is one of my favorite Stephen King books of all time. I never hated this one because you know what it does? It does what a sequel should do. It goes in a very different direction. You got to give it this. I know there's a lot of detractors out there, but I think you people are kind of give me that. I think you people are kind of after seeing this. And to be fair, this isn't like an awful movie, but this was so meh and so forgettable. I mean, at least this, there's some things you remember about this yeah, movie. Yeah. Um, it's great. I never hated this movie. I liked it. Now, granted, probably this movie wouldn't work as well as it does if we if we didn't have the fabulous, brilliant performance by Clancy Brown, who saw this script and said, okay, this is the, this is schlock, but you know what? I can, the schlock can make me go hammy, and hammy works. I'm gonna go over the top, and I'm gonna have a fucking good time and give the best performance I can. And he makes he shoots up the movie a few levels. I will fight everybody who does not love. And he also plays such a good bastard. Like before he becomes Zombie Brown, he is such a good fucking bastard. I fucking love Clancy Brown. Like, oh my god. I loved him then. I love him now. I heart Clancy Brown. He is like my darling zombie. Of all the zombies that I've ever watched on screen, he is my darling zombie. Um... Yeah, unlike yeah, you can tell he's actually having fun. Unlike anyone in the remake, and, who just have sticks up their asses constantly. And Christian brought up a very good point tonight, and I never thought of it. Why didn't they have Clancy Brown playing Judd in the remake? In the remake, it that would have been worked. A, it would have been a cool homage, and he would have given a better performance, or at least a more interesting performance than Lithgow. And we brings, like John Lithgow. Who, it's so bad to shit on John Lithgow as much as I have to with that movie, but. He brings fucking nothing to he, that movie. He is trying so hard not to imitate the performance by by Fred Gwynne that it, it, it. But he doesn't bring anything to it. Clancy Brown, you remember? Almost, I would say, dare say, just as much as you remembered for I different say, reasons. Yeah. I mean, granted, I mean, I'm gonna acknowledge right now. Don't anyone like come at me and say that performance is the most hammy performance ever on film. It might be, but you know what? He's having fun. He's committed, and there are some scenes where you just see him smiling and. And it hits for his character, he's gleefully happy. But you also get the feeling that Clancy Brown was having a hell of a good time oh, totally, making this totally. movie. Um, this also has a weirdly good cast, aside from Clancy Brown. It has Anthony Edwards uh, from ER fame. And he's still working in movies today. He, I mean, also for some of you guys, you might not know him for ER, maybe Revenge of the Nerds. But he, he gives a decent performance. He, nothing stand out, but he's good in what he's got. And Edward Furlong, who uh, even, which, okay, we didn't mean to review three movies with Edward Furlong it this month. That happened. just sort of happened. <laughs> um, 
But even uh, who is sleepwalking in this, because even he nowadays says that he was sleepwalking with this movie, and it shows that he does not want to be in this. But surprisingly, the other actor, his name is Jason something, and I'm sorry, I cannot remember his last name, but the other actor that plays Drew in this movie, I think actually gives a very heartfelt performance. He's basically more of a main character than Edward Furlong. And he's more, be I think he's very believable. Like, he's, yeah. uh, he's a, and he, I don't think, I think maybe he did one other movie, and then you never heard from him again. Mm -hmm. And it's too bad because his performance was really good. And he's and like Clancy Brown. Now he's not going near as over the top as Clancy Brown is, but he is doing a really good job. And he was probably 13, 14, maybe 15 when mm -hmm. he did this movie. And he does a really good job. And even though Edward Furlong is, is I'll admit, he, he is sleepwalking a little bit. And I love Edward Furlong. Like I, back in the day, I actually thought he was a legitimately good actor. And it wasn't just because he was hot. Mm -hmm. he, yes, he was a very good looking guy. But I actually thought, like, Marvin's Room, um, bef uh, Before and After with Meryl Streep, which is a great movie. Um, he And Terminator 2, which most people remember him from. But he, I actually thought, before the drugs got him, he was actually a hell of a good actor. And um, But he, it, this isn't one of his most stellar performances. But even half Edwards is still pretty good. He's decent. Or Furlong, I'm sorry. Even half Furlong is still he's pretty decent, good. decent, I guess. Like, you can very clearly tell he's sleepwalking through this. And he then is, kind of drag it down. Even but. half sleepwalking there's some scenes where it kind of shows where this is a this kid's a pretty damn good actor mm -hmm. he is um and and uh we also got uh, the other actor that plays the bully he basically in every movie he did he was a bully he just kind of had that 90s bully look <laughs> the to the most him. stereotypical 90s bully in and any movie people will say that this has almost nothing to do with pe the original pet cemetery and except for where we are force fed references to the creeds and we get a lot of them in this movie i'm not going to say this movie is a perfect film, but it's fun. It's campy, but in the best sense of the word. Mm -hmm. There the, there are some cool shots. There's some good gore effects. And like I said, the probably what shoots this movie from being just like a standard, you know, mediocre schlock is just Clancy Brown. Whether he's being over the top zombie or if he is being a bastard, and he is a bastard in this movie. Um, you, I still love him. Like, I should hate him. And I love Gus. Yeah. I fucking love him. I do like how he does do the role of there are he's a total piece of shit but there are a couple scenes where he does seem like a genuinely nice guy and he's not putting on an act there and I do like how Clancy Brown like yeah he's happy as shit as soon as Gus is killed but like there he does bring some nuance to his performance before that point and he, I do like that he does and you can see he's having fun and Anthony Edwards is is, is perfectly solid um th there are some things that you have issues really with. the problem with this movie is is that Edward Furlong and Anthony Edwards are basically side characters in their own damn movie. As soon as Drew and Gus get introduced, they take over the movie, which is for the movie's betterment, but it just, it, we the end and the beginning of this movie is building up Ed, Edward Furlong and Anthony Edwards, and I'm just like, I don't care about them. Neither of them are giving in all that good of performances, and they're not that interesting of characters. They're fine. I, they're not. They're not. They're not bringing their A game, but they're still okay. But Christian's right. The 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 two characters that are the most compelling are definitely Gus and Drew. And Gus's mom, or, Gu, or Gus's wife, and Drew's mom. She. I don't like her character because she basically plays a woman that lets some asshole treat her kid horribly. There's one scene where Gus kills this beautiful husky. The husky's also a great mm -hmm. star in this movie, yeah. and he 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 fucking kills the dog and. Um, I tell you, if it was one of my boys, if someone see, did that, I'd fucking kill him. See, that's what I mean. I really legitimately feel that the original draft of this movie might have been, might have not had Edward Furlong in this movie, and it was just about them, and she would have gotten a bit more development. Because that's a way more interesting story than the Edward Furlong, my actress mom died, and I have to build back a relationship with my dad, who I have like three scenes with. It just, it doesn't work. I suppose so, but as, as campy and over the top as this movie gets, there are some legitimately heartbreaking scenes. The scene where Zowie gets shot and he doesn't die like just like that. It takes him most of the night to die and Drew is holding his dog and if you're a dog person, that's a pretty rough scene. Also, the score in this movie is very interesting. The Ramones come back to do a closing credit song just like they did and it's, um, even though it's not quite as catchy as Pet Cemetery, Poison Heart is still a yeah, solid no, I don't. Tune. I don't think Poison Heart was written for this movie. I think that they had that written because that was written when Dee Dee was still in the band so this was a late night. <laughs> 
80s, 90s. So. Yeah, but it, it works with the It works movie. with the movie, but I don't think that they were actually were, they were like actively involved with this movie as they were with the other one. No, but it's still cool they came oh, back. Oh, no, it's totally still cool that they still threw a song on it. Poison Heart's great, but... And also, uh, Jan King did a song called Fading Away, which I, I loved it. I loved it as a kid, and I love it now. It's a really... It, it's a very emotional song. It's used during the death of Zowie, and I know it's... Uh, Christian pointed it out. It was used in a few other movies, but I still think it's a really great song. I like this soundtrack. There's some other odd placement there's songs, some, but... It's I not that it's a bad soundtrack. There's some good songs on the soundtrack. It just, it's a really eclectic and weird-ass soundtrack. There's... I personally like it. Most of the songs, like, are really kind of upbeat, almost proto-punk, and then you just have the Jan King slow song and a few others that just don't fit with the entirety of the movie. This movie is very oddly... Uh, it has a very odd pace and tone with it, and the music kind of shows through with it. True, but I actually think it works, and anyone else who's like me, who likes, who digs a lot of the soundtrack, it's coming on vinyl, people. Mm -hmm. It's being released this October. It actually should probably be out by the time this video is up. Yes, it should be, and I want it, and the cover is sexy. Mm -hmm. They showed the cover online, and it is super sexy. Um, there are some issues with this movie. There are some things that don't work, but I will say, and I don't, I don't hate this one, it was mediocre, but I thought, of the way they built this up, I thought this was going to be a lot better. And I will say, even with all of its issues, and yes, it's over the top and campiness, I'm, I'm not going to argue with anyone who, who, who doesn't like this film. But I say, for me, it's a way better thing than the remake. Yeah. And Mary Lambert did come back to yeah, direct Yeah, she directed this. it, and I believe she also wrote this. I don't know if she wrote it, but and I and, and Stephen King, yes, I know Stephen King absolutely hates this this the sequel this was like one of the few things where he was actively angry yeah i think he i think uh, he was threatening to sue yeah, i don't yeah, think he like, ever of did all the fucking ones like this is like yeah Even i had this children of the corn remake like yeah this movie does have a lot of issues but overall i do enjoy it for what it is but like of all the ones for stephen king to be pissed about it's not the weird some of the corn sequels it's not sometimes they come back again it's fucking pet cemetery 2 that he's pissed about it's weird but you know what guys and i can understand like people who are detractors of this film, I get it. You're not going to get the emotional impact of the first Pet Cemetery. This is a completely different thing, but that's kind of what I think a good sequel should do. You're not going to get the emotional impact that Del Medcalf brought to the role of Lewis. You're not, although I will say though that Clancy Brown gives just as a memorable performance mm -hmm. as Judd, but it's not an emotional one. This one's just where Judd was very emotional, and Judd was kind of like everybody's father. If anyone's read the book, you know how the book opens where Lewis. Creed never met his father, and Judd was kind of uh, Lewis's surrogate father in a way, and I think anyone who's read the book, or and even watched the movie, you can identify why Lewis is so drawn to Judd, because Judd was play played so brilliantly like that, and Clancy Brown isn't like that kind of Judd, but he's just as memorable and he's fun. I guess maybe they want to go for a different tone, but I actually think his performance is in a weird way, just as, maybe not just as good, but fun. In a fun sense, it's just as good as Judd's. Um, but you don't have the heart or impact. And we got, like Christian said, this movie is more geared toward teenagers where there's children in yeah, the first one. Like, so I, know a, I know a lot of people, and even admittedly I did make, uh, th I think this for all that this is a very like emo kind of movie. Yeah. Uh, no, I will say, yeah it is, but I guess in fairness it does, that is kind of the point since we're following kids. It has a lot more of a less introspective look on death uh, compared to the original. The original has a lot more of an introspective look, whereas this one's a little bit more basic, and it's weird. You would think that the first one would have had the more basic outlook on death, but no, this one kind of does. It does, but at the same time, there is some... Uh, I like there's a scene where Drew and Edward Furlong are sitting at the riverbank before all shit comes down to it, and um, he goes, uh, and Drew goes, I guess you get over... I've never had anyone die before, but I guess you get over it, and uh, Edward Furlong... And this is actually one mo uh, what part of the movie where I think he's actually bringing his A game and he, he kind of takes a long pause and kind of shakes his head and goes no you never get over it and I think that's true you know time heals all wounds Yes and no, that's kind of true, but it's really not. If you've ever lost somebody, and not necessarily even to death, you you understand that that loss is always with you. It might get a little easier during time, but there will always be a, an empty place. If you've ever lost somebody in your life that you really loved, there's always that emptiness. Mm -hmm. Even when you have a happy, joyous moment, it kind of is more of a bittersweet moment because that person isn't there with you. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, no, um... 
I don't know, but like you have those introspective moments, and then granted, I love him, but then you have fucking Clancy Brown hamming it up like the very next scene. So it's just the tone, weird. The tone is this movie weird. is very weirdly toned. Like it, it is. I I feel like originally it was it might be supposed to it was going to be either a lot more campy, and then the studio wanted it to be to be feel more like Pet Cemetery, or it was supposed to be more like Pet Cemetery, and the studio wanted it to be more campy. I don't know what 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 there is, but it's just some weird tone shifts this movie goes through. Yeah, it does. I agree with Christian and one of my other things and this is just to deal with the writing this is probably my biggest con of the movie the the decision they make to bring back Judd or not Judd the decision they make to bring back Gus after Zowie rips his throat out I they they're like 14 or 15 year old kids at this point and neither one of them are stupid and I get that teenagers make dumb decisions I made a shit ton of them when I was a teenager we all do but he before the scene right before that Gus was gonna literally beat Drew with a cross from the pet cemetery. He was going to physically beat him. He killed his dog. And if it were me, maybe this just shows what kind of a person I, I, I know. am. It, it but, does feel really weirdly written. But I don't think that these kids this old would have said this is an, they don't get that this kid, this guy's an asshole and probably the results aren't going to be good. They were, they didn't kill him. It was the dog. I would have just left Gus. I guess. Like, I, I know. Never, I, 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 that always bothered. I'm never going to get a chance to talk about yeah, this I so I've got to talk about this it bothered me when I was a kid and I was like nine maybe ten when this movie came out and I just thought I can understand bringing back everybody else because you love them but it's it's made very apparent that that Drew does not particularly it's a pretty much mutual hate hate between the two characters and he initiates that in the movie Gus is my stepdad you know and he even says he kind of wishes he would die so I, it seems like this is sort of a gift from the heavens that this asshole got his throat ripped See, out. See, that's what I mean by I wish this movie was more about Drew and Gus. Like, you could actually do some, like, leg have some good scenes of them, you know, showing Gus does have his moments of being a good portion and showing that conflict in Drew's minds of he's in it. He was gonna beat me, but he's not an entirely big piece of shit and my mom genuinely loves him. What do I do here? You could have done some interesting stuff with that. I but suppose. fucking Edward Furlong drags this thing down with his plot of just, oh no. We're gonna bear I'm him. being bullied. Oh, my mom died. Oh no, I can't relate with my <laughs> Dad. Oh. That's basically what he does for this entire movie. Like, he has a few good scenes, but Edward Furlong is probably the worst part of this movie. I wouldn't say it's the worst part. It, 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 he doesn't bring his A game, I will give it that. But I think it's more the written thing. But I know we wouldn't have a movie if the kids didn't bring Gus back. But I just wish it was had a more compelling reason because yeah. they, if they were younger kids, I could buy that reason. I could, you know, if they were younger kids, a little younger, I could see that. But they're 14, 15. This, I think, and they're not, neither one of them are dumb kids, and I just think that, you know what, let's not bring this asshole back, he's a dick. I see that, so, I, I totally would agree with you Me on at that, nine yeah. was saying that to the movie, and watching it tonight, I still, that's just with the writing, I get that sometimes we have to go to A, B to get to C, but sometimes we need a little bit better reason, and this is probably the one movie that I say, give me a better reason movie, yeah, I'll go I, with I, I would agree with you on that, like, I don't know, like... How do you feel about how weird this movie gets by its at last act? Because this movie goes fucking crazy. It does go crazy, but it's fun. You know, if it was trying to be a serious, like, what pet, the first Pet Cemetery did, I might be pissed. But because of uh, Clancy Brown's performance, I think they knew what it was, so they were just doing what they could with it. Oh, I think by the end they knew exactly what they were doing. Yeah. But I think that early on they still wanted to try and make, basically, literally, a second Pet Cemetery instead of doing their own thing, like this movie does by the end of it. I guess. I, I, I don't have a problem with it. I, I acknowledge there's some major problems with this movie, but overall, it's just too much fun. And this probably, I have to talk about this because I'll never get another chance, this has one of my favorite horror movie lines ever. Why did you dig up my, my wife? wife? Because, because I, I wanted, wanted to fuck her. <laughs> I fucking, I don't know how many times this kid has heard yeah, me utter yeah, that you line. Love that fucking line. Like, I could whack off to that scene because I just love it so <laughs> There's much. also, like, some great, there's, there is some legit really great bits in this. Yeah. One of my favorite thing, things that makes no fucking sense is, goddamn, my mom's a werewolf, basically. <laughs> the fucking, there's two dream sequences that Edward Furlong and Anthony Edwards have where they, where they're, where they see the fuck their mother who died. Uh, 
<laughs> but it, but it, but fucking for whatever reason, Zowie's in those scenes. So she just you just have her with a big stupid wolf mask on it. It just I don't know why, but I love that stupid look. It just is so weird. It is a little bit odd in tone, but it, this movie is kind of all over the place. I'm not saying, guys, this is a masterpiece. I have a stop, soft spot for it, nostalgia. But even back then, like everyone hated this movie, and I never did. I I like this was such a score for me when I found this on VHS this is probably one of my favorite war tapes I own on VHS and everyone hates this well I know it, it has nowadays a lot of people are kind of warming up to what it's doing it's, yeah and it's, I will legitimately say I think it's better because oh, it's I more would, memorable yeah I totally agree with you I'm not joking when I say that yeah this is that it's way it's like a whole lot better than the remake I would way rather watch this again there's a lot more memorable scenes this one's perfectly fine yeah, I'm I, not hating yeah. This Even one. if I'm in the right mood, I might want to watch it over the original because the original is such a heavy movie. But, like, I don't know. I don't feel this movie get, deserves the hate that it gets. It definitely no. at least warrants it to be released on Blu ray, so you, at least for me as a collector, so I can have a full <laughs> set of all the movies. Yeah. Um, but, I'm like. Legitimate. Now, I'm not going to go so far. I, I, I know a couple people who actually say that the that they prefer this one over the original. I wouldn't say that. I like the original. No, is, the original's fucking excellent. Yeah, the original is one of my favorite movies of, you know, uh, it's, it's in my top 10 of horror movies. But this one isn't. I never got the hate. I don't. I didn't get it back then I don't get it now and I think it's fun and you just got to go in with the right attitude guys yes I will acknowledge campy as hell in some scenes over the top some of the writing could have been a lot stronger than it was and yes Edward Furlong does not bring his A game but despite all that I still really dig it yeah I I will say I this I every watch the time we watch this movie it does grow on me a little bit more every time yeah yeah it, it, it's it's don't go in and now if, if you've never seen this movie if it's escaped your radar, don't go in thinking you're going to get another Pet Cemetery. even though Mary Lambert, I think maybe because Mary Lambert directed it, people were had certain expectations. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, again, I'm acknowledging this, this is kind of, a, it's kind of a mess, but it's not a total trash fire. There's just, the, it has some charm. And it's it not does. just Clancy it Brown. Totally does. It a totally lot of does. it's Clancy Brown, but there's something else with this movie that works. I also like the feel of this movie. It, it has a very interesting feel, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, well, we watched this on VHS. Yeah, because it's a bitch to find on DVD and it doesn't have a Blu-ray release. Yeah, and I um, would much rather have VHS anyway. Yeah, no. Uh, I, I don't know. Why would you give this for a letter grading, I guess? Uh, okay, this is a personal one, guys. I would give this... A solid A. I, I could. Be, I I know that might be taking it a bit far, but uh, but I'm acknowledging that that's mixed with a lot of nostalgia, and this is just a personal one. I never got the hate. I'd say, but for some of you people, I think this would be maybe a B minus or C, mm -hmm. and maybe even further. If you can't handle you know ridiculous things, you, this might not totally be your bag. But for me, I gotta be honest. This is an honest channel, and I even with all its problems, I still gotta give it an A. And yes, it's probably a lot of nostalgia clouding that but fuck it I, 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 it's what I feel I think this is an A minus but it's still an A what about you? Um, for me, I would give this, like you said, I would give this a B minus. But even then, that's it, that is going up a lot than what I would would have originally given. It, when I when I would have given this movie had we done this like first year of the channel, I probably would have given this like a D. Yeah. Like, but this movie, every time I watch it, it does grow on me more and more. I do end up liking it. Granted, this viewing, I did realize, wow, Edward Furlong is fucking awful in this movie, and he kind of drags it all down. Um, so, but no, like, if you took out Edward Furlong, I feel like this would be a really good, really good follow-up to uh, Pet Cemetery. You could have developed more on Drew's and Gus's relationship and given it some co uh, complexity. But, as is, I would give this a B-. minus. It's a solid enough flick. It's fun. It has some problems. It's not to the point of the original. It won't but be for everybody. it's way more enjoyable than the remake. It, it, unlike the remake, no, no one has a stick up their ass the entire time except maybe Edward Furlong. I get that. And you know what? And we're not... Th this isn't like uh, the most hated movie of the year for us. And no, we, I don't fucking it's, hate this movie. I think it has some good points. It's just a really bland movie. Yeah, and Pet Cemetery. that's something you should never say meh or blah 
uh, with the Pet Cemetery no, movie. No. So I, I know some people might, I'm in the comments might say, you know, I'm an idiot and that this is an, I've heard that this is an awful piece of shit and nobody with any sort of taste or culture would like this movie. Maybe I don't have any taste or culture, but at least I'm honest. I like this movie. Fuck it. I'm going to be who I am. I give this an A minus. Fuck it. I can see that. Fuck I can totally, the, and, I can totally see that. And that's why I chose it for this week because this movie does get a very strong reaction out of me. It's not, I'm not saying it's a masterpiece. I, I legitimately would say the original Pet Cemetery is a masterpiece. This is not a masterpiece, but it's fun. It has some heart and, and a lot of it is Clancy Brown and nostalgia, but that's not the only reason, people. There's just something else about it that makes it work that I just, even with all its faults, it's still damn charming. I would so, agree with that. Yeah, so I guess that, do we have anything else to say about Pet Cemetery? I don't think so. Too? Can I hear an apology and who was right? It's not a bad movie at all. It's uh, perfectly fine. I'm sorry, Sonny. I'm a little deep. Can you say it? <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> Why did you dig up my wife? Because I wanted to fuck her. <laughs>